Thanks for tuning in to Healthy Planet One, where we discuss healthy living from experts in each of their fields. This is your host, Patricia Starr. And your co-host, Kimberly Knox. Today's guest on Healthy Planet One is Oksana Datz, and we will be talking about the gift of life. We are very excited to have you with us, Oksana. Welcome to our show. Are I'm you very there? excited to be here, too. <laughs> Good. And I wanted to just mention to our listeners that you have, you come from the Ukraine, so you'll hear an accent. And it is the town of Lviv, Ukraine, where you were born. You graduated from the University of Ivan Franco with a degree in mathematics and that's so incredible because mathematics is the science, the spiritual speaking, if you will, in math. And so to find that you are here working with us today with your gift of health, um, we're really happy to have you with us. It's interesting because, as you've told me, you, you immigrated to the United States in 1995, and you were in the mortgage industry for, uh, what is it, uh, seven or eight years, I believe, right? Seventeen. Yeah, 17, 17 years, years, excuse me. And now you've come to Sarasota and you are the owner of Gift of Health and a certified raw food nutritionist and a certified speaker and coach. So we are so uh, happy to have you. And I know, I know one thing about you. You are an amazing coach and a gifted healer. And you work with a very interesting software called the Zyto Evox software. Can you tell us a little bit about this and how you got involved with that? Sure. So when I um, I made two smart moves in my life, and I'm very excited, one from Ukraine to United States, and the second move was to beautiful Sarasota. So I'm very thankful and grateful to be part of this community and also to know all of your ladies and, um, of course, Holistic Chamber of Commerce. It's beautiful. Thank you. So the when I started looking into, my mother passed away from cancer back in 2005. So when, when I started looking into why is it um, that we have different diseases and why, you know, different things happen for different reasons. So I thought it was all food related. A lot of it is food related. So I study food. I did different things, raw food, all organic. And then... As I did my shows, I told people how to prepare and how to make different food. I found that for some people, it was very easy to go and do juices and do smoothies and detox. And for some other people, they just wanted food. So perfect example was my husband that um, his mother at the time of the war was sent to Siberia. So her dream for 10 years was just to eat food. She wanted food. And then when she got out, she got married, had three children, and my husband was a middle kid. And as a child of someone who had such an experience, it was in him, these deep emotions that we get transgenerationally was something that I looked into it. And I was then introduced to this amazing software that pretty much by recording a person's voice and measurement measurements of their galvanic skin response, it finds any subconscious um, patterns and blocks that we inherit from parents, grandparents who went through um, major life changes, different events, like any grandparent that went through the war or Holocaust has um, subconscious fear anger, suppressed emotional expressions, feeling of unworthy, undeserving, and that all affects, we are very close generation to these grandparents. So once we, once I found something that actually works, it shifts perspective, like for my husband and for many clients that I work with, in the beginning, in the morning, it was hard, he had to eat right away. And now he can go until 10, 11 o'clock, and he doesn't have to have food, because all these you know, feelings um, that he had inside, worriness, it was all, it shifted, it released. So the software pretty much records someone's voice. It finds any area, patterns in different areas. A lot of it also has to do with sadness. When someone had sadness in the early childhood, it pretty much affects people's lifestyle today. So um, it's very cool. I love it. 
So that's really interesting sharing about your husband. So you're saying that when he did this process, he actually was able to, it, it, it's almost like unattached from his needing to eat because the eating was related to his emotions. Is that what I understand? That's totally correct. Yes. And the same thing with my daughter that at that time when I worked with, she was 13 and her, you know, teenagers, they go through different hormonal changes and stuff. So it was, she was in the fridge literally like every hour of the day. And then when we did transgenerational and she released patterns from her father's mother that she never saw was um, she the only thing she was saying is, I know I have a grandmother. I never met her. Um, I know she was in Siberia. And there is nothing else that I know about her. And um, by repeating, repeating and recording and reframing on this grandmother, she then the next day, she didn't, she I was like, Angelina, why are you not eating? She's like, Mom, I'm not even hungry. It's something weird happened. So <laughs> it, that's how it works. <laughs> well, that's really Interesting. amazing. Kimberly, yes. you have a question for Oksana. Mm -hmm. Hi, Oksana. So you, you know that I'm also um, an integrative health coach. So I deal with emotional eating. And as you know, the brain is actually wired to look to food for comfort. And I deal with this all the time. So it sounds very, um, this sounds so hopeful for people to really get more to the root cause of what you do and, and what I do. Um, so are you, this must be very successful for you when you're utilizing it to, to address emotional eating patterns. Yes, because you know, when you do any work and every work is beautiful and it's very important, this is not, you know, you do this and you do that and, I, I did so many different modalities. I thought I was done. But then when I got to my voice, it's so different because by the voice, you can tell so much about the person. So um, when you record someone's voice and you see where actually the problem started, was it conditional love? And a lot of healers have this conditional love constantly, um, that self-love to give the body what the body wants and allowing to be in moderation and just to, um, to explore and to that inner child inside of us that you know, want something. And we were, mm -mm, you're not eat I did too, no way, no, no, no. No, mm -hmm. and you know it's it's conditional love. So it's a lot of different zones that are affecting our lifestyle, and um, that is by doing this kind of work, you repair this whole emo emotional foundation. It's like having a beautiful home, and all these rooms that we find in our home and we open them up. But if the foundation of the home is cracked, you can repair and work on each and decorate and paint and do all kinds of stuff in each room but the foundation is not really there so this is like healing emotional foundation and once it's healed it's so easy to go and repair every other room you know what's interesting yeah, so to what me Axana, is that um with the, the process that you have of course we know they say that we only use 10% of our brain. Well, when you look at, we, yeah, on a conscious level, there's 10% working, okay? And there's like 90% that's really that subconscious that's underneath, which is what it sounds like, you know, you're working with with this program. So can you break down what are the various areas that this voice detection program actually pinpoints and, and helps people? Sure. So um, there are four quadrant in the circle. So the first quadrant, it's like one, two, and three o'clock, is pretty much um, it describes how the person presents itself. So the zone one is <clears throat> usually when someone is dealing with very strong authority and almost like bullies in, in the childhood, especially with this rewards and punishment program. So if you do this, you get constant supervision of the child um, when someone has that. And then um, also a lot of the um, zones like repetitive thinking. 
So this repetitive thinking, it's almost when you have a person that only does everything logical, nothing emotional attached to it. And this in the same quadrant, we have sadness. So that whole area affects absolutely one thing. So that is actually beginning of depression. So if someone is into depression in their late 60s, 70s, uh, or even earlier in life, the root of it, you can treat, you can do all kinds of stuff, but it really is probably um, transition, transgenerationally comes from if the grandparent or parent had um, depression, this has to do with this. This is the first zone. The second zone is um, emotionally disconnected, self-critical, and conditional love. So often when there is deep beginning of emotional pain uh, in the person, it could have been from the mother's pregnancy. This is comes when the person was rejected by very close people in their lives. So it could have been, um, you know, sometimes someone gets pregnant and person, and there is a judgment by the parents where uh, the, the person that they're in love with, they separate like different things, how that their mother felt. So by recording someone's Um, voice on the mother and then remembering their childhood, the story they heard, the software determines, but I know it well enough now to read where is this coming from. And then conditional love, you've got always, sometimes, you know, what happens is when we go back to past events and we blame ourselves for doing something that way, constantly living in the past with the intention to fix it versus accepting as it is and moving on. So that comes when the person wants it, like you kind of understand with your brain, but subconsciously, because in our subconscious mind, on the back is where we process 400 billion of bits of information per second, where our conscious mind, the top of the head, is only 2,000 bits of information per second. So there is a huge, all our knowledge, everything we've got is in our subconscious. Like you said, 90% or more, it's in there. So um, also that the, the second, the next one is uh, that conditional love. So conditional love is... Um, oh, you look nice. We love you. Oh, this is the dress you're wearing today. Beautiful. Like, did you do your homework? Yes. Did you like, you know, no, you can't. No, you, we love you when you do this. We love you so much. Each time Mm -hmm. the kid does something, Mm -hmm. then when it feels loved Mm -hmm. versus just like unconditionally loved and then you do all these things so um, the next one is anger so anger is defensive mechanism so when we defense ourselves so it's okay to get angry because you know we are human beings and Mm -hmm. it's our instinct so Mm -hmm. when you are attracted by someone on the road you got to get angry but the the, the question is how fast you can return back to love it's not Mm -hmm. how you know, like if you get angry in someone and then um, also fearful, fear of being observed and judged by others. That comes a lot from the childhood where we were told, oh, my gosh, look at this. What is what is your teacher going to say? What is this person? What? And then constant fear of what other people will say. And and, you know, that has a huge effect on our physical health. Um, the spine, the whole digestive system, Mm -hmm. um, uh, the kidneys, according to Chinese medicine, all this, um, you know, fear stores in Mm -hmm. many organs. And then uh, you move on to um, suppressed emotional expression, which comes with tendency to fix others. So we as a kid, we listen to whoever was with us and maybe someone constantly criticizes others and says the person should have done this and you should have done that. And and then you want like to yell, but you can't because you were raised enough to be quiet and you just can't talk back to older people because that's not how we were raised. So that suppressed emotional expression actually has a deep root um, and a lot of cases with cancer. That's when it starts uh, mm-hmm. in that zone, suppressed emotional expression and then so and then the next so the whole quadrant of fear suppressed emotional expression anger that whole thing is not what you afraid of and 
not what you angry about, but what are you afraid of? So this is actual what you know why are we worried constantly that comes in this topic of money like why are we so worried where is that worry?